This information is going to be so fresh. I literally stepped off the boat yesterday and now I'm recording this video. That's how excited I am and want to share all this information with you. Welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be walking you through a guide of how to go on a cruise with kids, more specifically toddlers, because they do have very specific needs. My kids are one in three, so that's what I'm going to be speaking to specifically today if you have kids generally in that range. Stay till to the end, I'm going to give a bonus tip about Carnival Miracle, specifically your Carnival Cruises for your infant. If you're new to the channel, my name is Ashley. I'm a mom of two based in the San Francisco Bay Area. I love to make videos on the internet about being a mom. A bit of my history with cruises, Robin and I have not been on a cruise together, but we've both been on cruises individually. And it's kind of random, I feel like, that we both actually really like cruises. And so we have not been on one together and we have not been on one with kids. So it's been something that we've been really excited to try. The cruise that we went on was the Carnival Miracle Ship. It left San Francisco and sailed for three nights. It did one day at sea, stopped at a port of call in Sonata, Mexico, had another day back at sea, and we came round trip back to San Francisco. So today I'm gonna to go through everything in terms of how to book and board with kids, to the amenities and food and safety and everything. And hopefully this will be super helpful for you if you are thinking about going on your next cruise or if you're already booked and you're ready to sail. I'm actually gonna make another video that's focused specifically just on the booking in terms of how we found the best price and where we ended up booking. So the biggest thing about booking a cruise with kids is that kids are not free, even if it's your infant. So there is a minimum age that your kids need to be in order to go on specific cruises. So for this one in particular, six months is the minimum age for Carnival Cruise Lines. If there's gonna be two consecutive days at sea, your child needs to be 12 months in order to sail. When you book, you do choose the room that you're gonna stay in. There's a couple of options in terms of like a inner state room, an ocean view, a balcony, things like that. We ended up choosing a room in the middle of the boat and this ended up being a really, really good choice for us. Specifically, our room number was 8173 and we loved the location of this because it was close to an elevator and it was also close to the food. So the buffet was on the ninth floor. We were on the eighth floor. In order to get food, all we had to do was just climb a set of stairs and we were there at the buffet where there's basically kind of food available 24 seven. We are really, really happy that we splurged on the balcony because we had so many people in one room having a balcony felt like we had another room so for example when I needed you know the room to be empty so that I could put my baby down for a nap my husband and my three-year-old could go onto the balcony for a little bit for example until our baby fell asleep and then we could come back in as far as the boarding I have to say that was one of the hardest most challenging parts it's kind of similar to when you're boarding an airplane it's just a lot of like wait time and if your kids are starting to get a little impatient this can be the most challenging thing because you don't necessarily have access to you know food or toys or things like that by the time we got on the boat, I was kind of rushing for us to get food and for my baby to go down for a nap. So I don't think that it needs to be this way. You can go on, I think as early as like 11 a.m. So our ship was departing at 4 p.m. The latest you can get on is an hour and a half before your ship, or you could get on as early as 11 a.m., which I actually probably would recommend. You might as well start taking advantage of the ship's like amenities and things like that. So I think we basically set our check-in time to be one o'clock, and that was when it felt really, really rushed to get in for that afternoon nap. If I were to do that again, I would probably just do it earlier, like way before the nap, so we have plenty of time, or to just do it after their afternoon nap or something like that, um, and just go on like at the very latest second possible. Safety checks are now a lot easier. So if you've ever been on a cruise before, usually you have to all gather in like where your muster station or where you're supposed to go if there is an emergency and like grab your life jacket and go and they teach you all the safety things. Thankfully, they have made that easier, at least on Carnival. And as we entered, basically someone was there to kind of give us an individual little lesson on how the life jacket works and basically we were sent on our way. One thing to note is that we did drop off our luggage at the curbside and so it didn't arrive in our room until about two hours after we got on the boat. So just something to take note of if you are gonna drop your luggage and you need some stuff for the kids. This was a sleeping arrangement. So the staterooms on a cruise, not very large, but we did decide to go with one king bed instead of two twin beds, just because typically when we travel, what happens is my husband and I co-sleep with my three-year-old in a big bed, and then we have a separate crib for my one-year-old. In terms of the second bed that you can have in these staterooms, there's two options. One is there is the couch that you can convert into a sofa bed, and then there's also basically an, a, essentially like a bunk bed that comes from the top. Our three-year-old is basically always in our bed, so sometimes it is nice for an adult to have a separate bed to go to, so there's a little bit more 
room in case your three-year-old is kind of like doing a 360. Originally I thought the bunk bed would be kind of fun but in the end I think having the sofa bed down was just kind of the most convenient in terms of like my, my three-year-old for example ended up wanting to hop from one bed to another um, during the daytime and it became like a fun like game I guess just to have like beds everywhere and then just for closer ac and easier access to my one-year-old as well there were times basically when he woke up in the middle of the night and I was able to just kind of like bring him over into my bed pretty easily rather than having to like climb up onto a bunk bed or something like that. Basically, you can use the crib that they provide for you. It's this LA baby brand that we have gotten actually at other hotel rooms in the past before, or you can bring your own pack and play. So we decided to risk it and just go with their crib. The only reason I was nervous about this was because I have a blackout tent that I like to use. It's not the slumber pod. It is a knockoff. I'm going to leave that link as well as my packing list for you in the description of this video. Um, I was nervous that my blackout tent wouldn't work on this LA baby brand portable crib that they bring in, but thankfully it did. Um, I was actually able to tie the straps down and everything so it actually worked perfectly So we were thinking of like oh in the end like would it have been easier to bring the pack and play because with the crib Like not gonna lie. This is cramped space like you are not this is not a spacious room Whatsoever you're having to like edge back and forth like next to the crib and everything like that um, We were thinking like whether we would have actually brought the pack and play in the end And I don't think so because the pack and play we were thinking and even though this crib as well that they provide is probably foldable We're just too lazy to do that like you're not gonna like take the mattress out every day and like you know and close up the pack and play just so that you can have a little bit more room and I'm really glad that we didn't take the extra time to lug our pack and play in and we just use the crib that they provided one thing to note is the crib also came a little bit after we checked in so like um, I think I I mentioned that I was trying to get that nap in right away we ended up having to do the nap for my infant that first nap very first nap on the ship we ended up having to just put him on the the king size bed um, because the crib hadn't arrived yet so just another thing to uh, consider if maybe you want to take that nap on the go in your carrier or in the stroller or something like that like you're not gonna have your crib available for you right when you get onto the ship so in addition to like the tools that we use was the blackout tent and then we also use the um, sound machine um, or we used white noise and this is a pro tip as well is when you're on a cruise you do not have access to internet so usually I will use my Alexa or something like that or use something on YouTube for some white noise but there is the hack if you haven't seen it on your iPhone um, you can actually get white noise there and you don't need any access to Wi-Fi or data which is awesome and so we ended up using that a lot really just for the transition times we didn't keep it on like all night um, but basically Basically for the transition times where there would be times where the baby was already sleeping and we would just still need to be getting ready at night for bed or everybody else was kind of like going in and out of the room so it was really helpful to have that white noise playing just to help um, mute any of that noise as for sleep for the adults I have to say it was kind of nice um, this is my first cruise after having babies and after having rocked so many babies to sleep for like three years when you're on a cruise the boat definitely you can definitely feel movement basically you get rocked to sleep and I was like I kind of love this granted you don't get seasick or anything like that it was a really nice way to fall asleep to be honest now let's talk about the amenities that they have available on board for things that are kids specific because this isn't like a kid cruise. I think Carnival does attract kids because it's a lower price point, but in general, I think maybe you've seen the TikToks and everything. It's 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 not necessarily just for kids. It's definitely for adults as well. So I was kind of paying attention to what they have for younger children. So the first thing that I noticed is that there aren't any changing tables in the bathrooms that I saw. A lot of the bathroom, the public bathrooms on the other floors um, are also like pretty tight, like room wise so I think what they're thinking there is that a lot of people can just go back to their stateroom to do a diaper change or something like that I don't know I was a little bit surprised by that and maybe there are some that I just didn't find I'm definitely the type to do a standing diaper change those are often easier for me anyways or we would just you know do it when we were back in the stateroom there's also not a lot of trash cans around on a cruise ship I think because there's so much crew and staff that are meant to help bust your dishes and things like that so they're not really expecting anyone to be having to throw anything away and so that was another thing I ended up having to like carry my diaper sometimes around until we got back to the room to throw it away there or there are kind of sparsely some trash cans around especially outside in terms of strollers and stuff it's definitely very 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 stroller friendly actually something we noticed on this cruise we noticed there was actually quite a few people using wheelchairs on this cruise and it just made me realize like it makes sense this is a very accessible uh, type of vacation um, for someone that has wheels so for strollers as well definitely not a worry the only thing is that you probably just have to use um, be using the elevators and we actually didn't have any big issue with this only on the first day when everyone was like getting on board and really excited and like trying to like go to all the different see the different things that was when the, the elevator 
elevators got really really backed up and it felt kind of annoying like if you didn't have kids or a stroller with you you probably would just take the stairs a bunch because you kind of need to get those steps in anyways you're gonna be eating so much besides the first day we didn't have any issues the elevators were fast like every other day that we had I still recommend bringing a really lightweight stroller though you may just want to pick it up and have your kids like walk the stairs or pick up your kids kind of reminded me of when I took my three-year-old to Japan and example just to go like up and down one flight of stairs um, to just like lift the stroller while we were doing that other reason you may want a very compact stroller or something that folds is in the dining room. So I will get to that later, but if you decide to do seated dining, for example, there's not always room for you to just like place your stroller somewhere. Um, and so it is nice that we could just fold ours up. We just brought like two very basic umbrella strollers and then we ended up just like sliding it under our table for dinner. Um, not to mention also in your stateroom, not a lot of room. So you definitely wanna be able to, we could then fold it up, store it in one of the closets. I definitely recommend bringing a stroller, but you know, as usual with travel, something lightweight will probably be easier. In the dining room at least, they had booster seats and they had high chairs. So that definitely was not an issue. In the main, in the buffet uh, cafeteria-like areas, there's definitely high chairs and booster seats as well. You just may have to ask one of the staff to help you find one. As for going to the bathroom, this one was actually very tricky because we have a three-year-old who has been potty trained for several months now, but we're still working on going to public bathrooms. Um, and it's mainly because of the flush. She's very afraid of the loud flushing, especially the automatic flushes where you just can't control it and he gets really scared. So we are very used to um, when we are in public doing a lot of like nature peas, like kind of out in the park or something like that. But obviously on a cruise ship, um, you can't just be going out. So that was one thing where we ended up having to go back to our stateroom a lot to go to the bathroom. And thankfully our room was very centrally located that it wasn't too annoying. But that was one thing I did not realize before getting on the boat was like, oh, like we can't just like find a tree somewhere. And, and lastly, from a safety perspective, what they do when you get on board is that all children under 12 will get this green bracelet um, that they tie to their wrist or to their ankle. I do recommend the ankle that seemed to be the least disruptive for our kids. And basically what it has, it has their muster station on it, which is where they need to go in case they get lost in the case of an emergency, someone can look at that bracelet and know where to take them so that they can come meet you later. That's a lot of information. I may have to split this up and make it into a part two because this was so long that I talked about, but I think you'll be really really well prepared for a cruise after you watch all of this video 